Hey cool cats and kittens, it's Tim with another tutorial with Away the Rope. Sorry to disappoint you, but this is not a tutorial on the cheetah's fail pattern from last week's video. Don't be a dope. No, this is about a question I get asked a lot. It's actually the question I think I get asked the most in the Way of the Rope app in the group chat from people going through the eight week course. And that is how to get out of cheetah's tail. And of course, how to get in is probably useful as well. As well as that, I wanna share two relatively new patterns that are variations on the cheetah's tail. That is the cheetah's tail matador or the cheetah door and the aptly named peacock. And I'll make sure there are chapters below. So if you just wanna learn those new patterns, you can skip right to them. My rope wants to get started. Do you wanna get started? All right, let's go. So beginning with how to get in and out of cheetah's tail, getting into cheetah's tail, relatively easy. All you're going to do is choose a side. So for me, my left side, and I'm gonna keep my left hand on that side and my right hand is just gonna come up and over the top and behind. And you'll see with it, it carries momentum as it comes over behind my left butt cheek here. And that can just start the, the rope off. So if you come in from underhand pattern, you're just gonna to have to time it with that. So the right hand comes up and over and as it scoops, there we go. And I'll do that once again from the side. So in underhand pattern on my left side, I'm just gonna lift that right hand up and over, boom. And there we go. Now, people, I know this might be familiar to you. Your cheetah's tailing. What do I do from here? I'm stuck. What do I do next? Do I go through my legs? Do I forward roll? Do I turn around? Where do I go? No, it's not that complicated. The way to get out of cheetah's tail is basically to underhand sneak. But I know some of you might not be able to do it. So if we learn this, this might actually help your underhand sneak. And that is that stop the rope and I'm gonna come out from my right hand side. You see my left fingers are here. And all I'm gonna do is with that momentum, as it comes up, I'm gonna shift that hand up and then scoop it through to carry the momentum. The hand's gonna come up and over and then we're out into underhand. So we get into it in this kind of reverse ace pattern and then to get out of it, scoop that hand up and over. And that backhand, it can stay where it is or it will naturally want to follow. So just so you can see from behind, the hand wants to scoop up and over and through. A really good tip for practicing this is to practice cheetah's tail one-handed. So you see I practice with my right hand. And what I'm gonna do is as it comes over to the right, I'm gonna go out into underhand pattern like that. So we can do the same on my left. I'm in underhand. I'm in cheetah's tail. Boom. And then it just gets that understanding of how to come out into underhand. There you have it. I've finally answered the question that's been keeping you up at night. Probably not, but how to get in and out of cheetah's tail with a simple scoop. You've got your cheetah's tail down. What next? Well, cheetah door, the cheetah's tail matador. Still fairly new to it, but I've just about got it down. It does take a few sessions to get. Well, it took me a few sessions to get, so don't be put off if you don't get it first try. It's just showing up, doing a few minutes each session. Just add it into your session you will get there. But the, the keys to Cheetah's Tail Matador, Cheetah Door, A, to really reach the hand across, so you're not just like passively here, you're really trying to reach the hand so that both hands are visible through here and through here. And the second key is to really wait until you go. So you're not rushing that, you're not rushing to go too early. You wanna wait and really try to give it momentum on the first spin. The more momentum you can give it on the first spin, the smoother it will be. So give it momentum and then wait for it to come around. Boom, wait, go. Boom, wait, go. One of the reasons I really like the cheetah's tail pattern is how much it gets us to mobilize from the base of our spine and our hips. So you're really whipping to get the first momentum going. Really whip, go, wait, and then move it across. Boom. So those are the three tips for cheetah door. Really nice pattern once you get it. All variations of the matador are nice. This is just another one to add to your repertoire. That is the cheetah door. Okay, so last but not least, we have the inversion of the cheetah's tail, the overhand cheetah's tail, AKA the peacock. This one took me a while, still not perfected it, so you gotta bear with me as I go, but I know what I've done to get to here, and so I'm gonna share that with you. The best way to learn this to begin with is to do it one-handed each side at a time. So I can do overhand with my right hand, and just, just learning that scoop, learning what that feels like. This will help you with your sneaks as well, because it's that wrist action, boom. 
boom, and then pass it to my left. And it's just getting used to feeling the rope coming to that side when I'm working my left hand over here and how hard that work is. So for me, this is the drill that got me to learn the peacock was just by doing it one-handed so that I could understand what this hand needs to do over here. Otherwise, you're fumbling in the dark, quite literally. If I'm honest, there isn't too many tips I can give you or technique for this pattern. It is just drilling it one-handed, like I say, on both sides, and then putting in the time, taking those wh whips on the leg that it's gonna get you to get the pattern down, and then really just that bob. Because we can't use much arm action for this, you've gotta really use your knees and kind of a little bit of arms that you can to bob up and down to give it that accelerated momentum on the way down that drives it through the swing at the back. Then there's a nice transition out of the peacock into cheetah's tail, which I like to call the bunny hop. And then I'm still trying to master transitioning back. I've not quite got it yet. Oh, there we go. You've got to work the hips a lot as well. And just working the arms behind the back is something we rarely ever learn. I have good control over here, so it's something that works out as well. It's one of those patterns that on the surface just appears a bit gimmicky, but I think it has got more function than I initially anyway gave it credit for. To develop further from that, there's a guy on uh, Instagram called Alpaca Flow, and he does uh, the peac uh, double peacocks. <laughs> and apparently I'm not too far off it either. That's the first time I tried it. It wasn't actually too hard. It's just about getting the peacock down first. What would you call that? Peacock matador, a bit too long. Peacockador, matacock. No, that's Mark Zuckerberg. There you have it, folks. Behind the back flows. Something unique to consider adding to your practice. I've started adding it to mine and quite enjoying it. Hopefully that's given you some food for thought, something to experiment with yourself. If that's all a bit over your head and you want something a bit simpler to start, check out wayofthereope.com. We've got the eight weeks to fluidity course, the best place I recommend on the internet for people to start their rope flow journey. Or if you just want to get yourself a rope and start learning from YouTube, we've got ropes as well. Other than that, thank you for watching. Please, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. And other than that, hope to see you in the next video. Peace out, guys. I saw a tiger, tiger saw me.